What's up, y'all? This is Brave, and I'm back for another review of The Impact New York. This is Season 1, Episode 4, and the episode is titled, Beef is Not on the Menu. So let's go ahead and jump right into the review. So we start this episode off with Ashley and her mom, Bernice, and they are talking about her dad, okay? Why was her dad at her little um, video shoot? Like, it seems to me that Bernice is ready for her daughter to stop letting her dad control her life in the sense of whenever, you know, she reaches out to him, he tells her one thing, but really he ain't going to show up for her. He's not doing what he's supposed to do as a parent. He never did. And it seems like Bernice just wants her daughter to let go of this idea of her having this great father or even a father, period. Not saying that she should just completely eliminate him from her life, but she has got to get this image of what she thinks her dad should be out because she has got to accept him for who he is. He's just not reliable. He's not stable. He's not going to consistently be in your life. Like, unfortunately, these are the cars that you were dealt. You just got to deal with it, baby girl. You cannot keep letting this man control your emotions to where you get super super hyped that he's going to come around but then on the flip side this man keeps disappointing you at some point Ashley is just going to have to accept the fact that her father is just not the guy that he should have been but unfortunately that's who she got as a dad now let's go ahead and move on because Scott is meeting up with his friend Blake I think he said that she was the former um beauty and fashion editor for Essence magazine she has a huge following she's an influencer and baby girl's really pretty okay so they meet up and talk about the fact that Scott he is no longer really posting about fashion anymore he's not posting about his styling gigs and who he's styling anymore you know he has now found other endeavors once the pandemic hit it wasn't no styling work for him to do. So what did he do? Follow other passions. He followed his passions to the point where he has a cookbook coming out. Number one, he has a line of spices. I mean, that's dope. That is so dope to me because unfortunately he works in an industry that depends upon celebrities. If the celebrity needs you, you're working. If they don't, There's no work for you. So he found his own lane to strive in. And I think that's dope for him. And I have um, followed his Instagram and his TikTok where he posts um, his meals. I think it's called like Dinner Plus. Baby, his food be looking good, okay? Now, I haven't tried his line of spices, but I'm definitely going to have to get some and let y'all know what I think about them. So he goes on to say that You know, when it comes to fashion and his new career in cooking, he feels like, you know, he has to nurture the cooking thing a little bit more because it's new versus fashion. Like fashion basically will always be there, but he has to make it work with his cooking thing, especially with him coming out with a whole cookbook. Baby, we got to sell the book and those spices. Now, he wants to get all the girls together so that way... They can have, uh, what was it? Babes and Bites. It was a really cute name. Um, he just wants the ladies to get together, you know, eat some food, have a good time, try the spices. All right, cool. All right, y'all. So we are back with Clea Trappa. She is now shooting the video for her song, Rockstar. Her homegirl, Malini, is there. And one thing that I noticed is the fact that she raps just like Ice Spice. Maybe it's a New York thing. I don't know. But she raps just like Ice Spice, but better. All right, so they talk about Melanie for a minute and how she hasn't even gotten her headshots taken. But she knows that she wants to do acting. She wants to do comedic stuff. She wants to do action. And that is where, you know, she thinks that she's going to thrive. So they're ready to switch sets at the music video shoot. Okay, fine. For me, I feel like when they went across the street, um, Cleo's energy was already starting to get a little bit different. But once Malini decided to bring up the fact that she talked to Chinese Kitty and talked to Ernest, oh, Cleo's energy completely changed. She was over it. 
y'all gotta stop bringing up that man she does not want to talk about him don't bring him up to her because it completely changes how she acts how she like moves yeah you can't be bringing that man up especially y'all doing it while this is her video shoot like this is her video shoot she's already in her head enough like, I just feel like this was not the time or the place to bring up Chinese Kitty or Ernest. So, when it's time for Malini to leave, right? For me, she was being a little bit extra when she decided to make the public announcement that she was about to leave to everybody. And I'm just like, girl, everybody don't know you. Relax. Um, and she said bye to Cleo. Not once, not twice, but three times. And that girl ignored her. So now, Malini is feeling some type of way about Cleo. Now, let's go ahead and move on to Dream Doll because, baby girl, she is about to attend the premiere of her movie. I think it's called Black Heat. Um, She's starring in it, lead role with NLE Choppa. I said, oh, okay, girl. <laughs> it sounds like a Tubi special, but okay. Nonetheless, um, Scott shows up to support her as well as Malini. And, you know, Malini, she's like, yeah, I'm so proud of you. But at the same time, I'm a little bit jealous because you're doing what I want to do. You know, I want to get into acting. And in this moment, I realized that, like, Dream is in a really good space in her life, number one. Number two, she's a girl's girl. Like, the fact that she's like, oh, girl, you want to do acting, too? I know of a role that you can audition for. Let me introduce you to my acting coach. Like, she's going above what she, you know, has to do for Malini. Like, completely above and beyond. And you can tell that Malini, she really did appreciate that. Because her own boyfriend won't go over lines with her. But Dream Doll said that she would. So, Dream, she's super nervous because, you know, this is her first big acting thing. People are there to see her. Like, did she do a good job or not? And it was very clear that Baby Girl was nervous, right? <laughs> so, what did she probably do? Drink to calm her nerves. Well, Baby drunk a little bit too much. Because once they got to the Q&A portion of the whole event... She was a mess. She kept talking, talking over people. You could tell she was tipsy. I'm like, oh, girl, you doing a lot. <laughs> you doing a lot right now. I'm glad that this was a low budget movie that you doing all of this for. Um, but yeah, you got to control that drinking. OK, find another way to get over the nerves. All right. So we actually see Scott check in with Malini. And, you know, just to see if she's talked to Cleo or whatever. And she hasn't. <laughs> you know, she's on a trip to the DR. But she does want to have a conversation with her when she comes back. Now, he's planning, you know, his Babes and Bites uh, party. And he's a little bit nervous because he's going to have Chinese Kitty there. As well as Cleo and Dream Doll. And he really don't want things to go left. All right, so people are showing up to the party, right? And we have Cleo there, and I can't remember who else was there. But they asked her about her video shoot, and she's like, oh, yeah, it was really cool. Malini showed up. You know, she had a cameo. She did her thing. You know, making it seem like there is no issue with her and this girl. And Scott is like, really? Because I heard some things. And she's like, well, what did you hear? Because she's confused. And I'm like, well, girl, you didn't hear that girl being super duper loud saying bye to you? <laughs> and how you ignored her? How did you not hear that? Now, when it comes to Cleo, according to her, she said bye. Okay, we didn't hear it. I don't know if she whispered it. I don't know what that was, but... According to her, you know, she said bye. If she did it, you know, she didn't mean anything by it. She was probably busy. And I get it. She was busy. She was probably trying to listen to the director, take, you know, give his instructions. So I get it. Um, I'm glad that she's not taking this seriously as if they really have an issue, which lets me know that this will be a breeze for them to get over. 
All right, so they have a little small chit chat or whatever, and then Ella brings up the fact that you know she hasn't heard from Ashley. She wondered if she was coming, and Scott was like, "Yeah, she's supposed to come," or whatever. And she's like, "Oh, I haven't talked to her in like a couple of days," and everybody's like, "Yes, yeah, probably because she booed up because she got back with her ex." Now, speaking of Ashley, we actually see her meet up with her homegirl, Chrissy, who looked like she could be her mama friend, but I'm going to let that go. So, Ashley basically lets us know about her and her baby daddy, okay? She's known this boy since, not boy, but she's known this man since they were 15 years old. Um, She hooked back up with him at her single release party or whatever, and now they don't know where they stand. Now, what got me was the fact that she went on about how, you know, she's been through so much with him. And I mean, everything was negative. She was like, I literally met him when he was 15 years old or whatever. I've been through the cheating. I've been through the whole thing with other women. And I'm just like, girl, you are too young to be trying to live that type of life. But it sounds like at some point she is going to take her baby daddy back. Okay. So, that's just what it is. Now, let's go ahead and move on to Scott's party, okay? So, Scott has this party, and I believe it was Cleo, Ella, and Dream Doll. They were all there at one point. And, you know, Scott was a little bit messy because he was trying to figure out what happened between Cleo and Malini at that video shoot, right? So, Cleo, she don't think that nothing happened between her and Malini. She feels like they are still cool. Everything's good. He's like, um, yeah, that's not the story that I got. He heard that, you know, Cleo was at her video shoot and she actually ignored Malini when she was trying to leave. Now, according to Cleo, she's like, no, I definitely said bye to her. Girl, you did not. You were over her bringing up Ernest. And you ignored her. But also, Malini, why did you sit up there and say bye like 50 times? Girl, just leave. All right, so moving past that situation, um, Kitty actually shows up or whatever. And you can already tell there's some tension in the room. And Scott gets the idea to be like, oh, Cleo, come with me into the kitchen. Just try to separate the girls. All right, so we got to get down to the bottom of this foolishness when it comes to Kitty and Cleo. Now, when Cleo talked to Scott, she basically says that, you know, her issue is with Ernest. And, you know, it is what it is when it comes to Kitty. Oh, however, when it comes to uh, Chinese Kitty, she's like, oh, there seems to be an issue. There's always an issue with me. She tried to make it be about me and all of this stuff. I'm like... Chinese Kitty, why do you keep going with that narrative that Cleo has an issue with you? The only issue that she had was that you brought around somebody who she don't like. So as everybody starts to have a conversation about how, oh, we all need to get together, Dream Doll introduces the idea of the cash trip. Where are they going? We don't know yet. But of course, Scott is like, Okay, you want all of us to be there, but will all of us get along and make it back to New York? So you already know, this is when Chinese Kitty pipes up. Like, girl, you got an issue with me, blah, 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 blah. You keep saying that it's earnest, but you got a problem with me. Girl, get a grip. It's not all about you. And like, even in Dream Doll's confessional, she's like, this has nothing to do with Kitty. This has everything to do with Ernest. And Cleo, so get over the issue. Baby, these two girls get to arguing and arguing and arguing to the point where we almost have a fight. And the most frustrating thing about this argument was the fact that Cleo was still standing on the fact that my issue is with Ernest. However, Chinese Kitty kept flipping it, saying, you got an issue with Ernest, but you got an issue with me. But you got a problem with me. You and me. It's like, girl, there's no you versus me. Could you stop it? Like, you involved yourself. You brought somebody around that you already knew this girl had a problem with from the get-go. You're upset because she mentioned you on her live when all she was saying was the only person that he styles is you. 
girl, she's talking about this man's clientele. Like, saying that he don't even have that many clients. Relax. And then another thing that was annoying to me was the fact that Cleo was like, well, you know that he styled you on one of the days that he was supposed to be styling me. And Kitty, she just brushed that off and kept going on with her narrative. And it's like, no, you should have been like, oh, I did not know that he had double booked like that. That's not cool. And then another thing that pissed me off with Kitty is that as Cleo is trying to tell her, like, girl, all because I have a problem with your stylist, does that seem like I have a problem with you? She's like, oh, you're getting aggressive. You're getting aggressive. Chinese Kitty, I know you should be the last person talking about some anybody getting aggressive when that is exactly what you've been doing this entire argument. So next thing you know, Chinese Kitty, she's the one who stands up first and you already know what follows after that. The other person is going to stand up because you're not going to stand over me. So then, you know, security gets involved and it becomes a whole thing. Scott, he over here freaking out because he doesn't do this and he's above the fighting. And it's like, boy, you want a reality show. You may not be fighting anybody, but the girls are going to fight. So it gets extremely heated to the point where Cleo ends up leaving first. Um, Scott, like I said, he was going off about the fact that he doesn't need to be involved in any type of things like this. He has too much on the line. He has a reputation and all of that. And then like right after Cleo left, Kitty is like, oh, I'm about to leave. I said, what you trying to do? Catch her outside? So that way you can get beat up? I'm not understanding, Kitty. What are you doing? Like, I'm sorry, y'all. That argument gave me such a headache. Just because Chinese Kitty is so self-absorbed that, like, she really thinks that everything is about her. And it's not. Like, the world is not revolving around you and what you have going on, girl. The same way that you took issue with the fact that Dream Doll charged you like that was the main issue when it came to that thing with dream doll you were mad because she has a fee and you are such a struggling artist that you can't charge anybody anything and you were broke so you couldn't afford her fee and then with this situation you're involving yourself where it doesn't need to be like I I was so done when she was yelling at Cleo talking about some you keep seeing my stylist you keep seeing my stylist you're not saying me Because this girl already told you she ain't got no issue with you. She got an issue with your stylist. Like, are you dumb? I don't understand. But y'all, that was pretty much the episode. That dinner was done. Okay? So, let me know what y'all thought about this episode. Are y'all team Cleo? Or are you team uh, Chinese Kitty? I can't imagine anybody being Chinese Kitty. But let me know what y'all thought about it. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you on my next review. Bye, guys.